get our hands on this thing and see what we got. We definitely had them all around us. I'm talking literally all around us. How the emotion is starting to set in. Unbelievable. <laughs> Down to the wire. He's coming in. Oh, thank you. This week on Double Lung, we're going to be in Zimbabwe on the Save Conservancy. We're going to be hunting with uh, Save Safaris. We're going to be hunting two of the Dangerous Seven this week. Hope you guys enjoy it. We're headed out, look for tracks. We're going to do some cold tracking on buffalo. We find some tracks not long out of camp. About a third or fourth spot we went looking and decided we'd start tracking. So we started cold tracking. The buffaloes walked right through here not long ago. They're just coming through here feeding. We bumped these two buffalo. When you're tracking buffalo, you're moving in so slow and it's real intense, you know, and, and you're being as careful and quiet as you can. All of a sudden you hear them running through the brush, you know. It's somewhat of a letdown after you did all that work. So, you know, you sit there and you, you regroup and you think about what you did and you give them some time to settle down. So we took off on the second run at them. So they're going out right in here and just pushing each other around. Kind of, you know, feeling a little frisky this morning. We've got fresh spore. So they're not far off. It's a big herd. They've fed in this area for a long, long time. So they're having to make really big wide sweeps to figure out which direction they actually left in because they just mold around in here and ate for quite a while. We bumped them a second time. At that point, we decided we were just going to let them go. We loaded up, you know, got everybody back together, headed back into camp, relax a little while, have some lunch. And uh, late in the day, we come upon some Cape Buffalo. Got set up on those. Had a really nice bull. We came across a herd of buffalo, and we found a, a reasonably nice bull in the herd. But as it's Paul's fifth safari with us, and he shot buffalo before, we were, we were looking for something special, and, you know, the time of day, just uh, a little late in the evening, didn't really have the perfect setup. It was a cow in the way there, and uh, we decided that uh, we'd hold off on that. It was great to see one of our targets and one of the big five. So last year, Paul took his whole family to South Africa, and Haley, my then fiance, had an amazing time. She loved everything about it. She loved the experience, and I always kind of was sitting at home thinking, man, that'd be cool to be on a trip like that. And then Paul started talking about his trip to Zimbabwe. I kind of was like, yeah, that would be, that'd be a cool trip, cool trip, if I can be part of it. And one day, finally, he was talking about it, and I said, hey, if I have the opportunity to be part of that, I want to take it. And so right then, right there, he got on his phone, he started messaging Leon, made sure that it was possible, and then said, hey, we're good to go. It can happen. And from that point on, just started counting down the days to the trip and very excited for it. So on the safari, Paul, um, Paul brought his son-in-law with him. Addison is fairly new to African hunting and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to experience the, the feel of a dangerous game hunt and uh, he was able to get on a, on a buffalo car hunt. They get a number of uh, cow tags here also just to manage the herd better. Hunting cow buffalo is, is really not any different than hunting a bull buffalo. It's intense, you've got to move in, you get in close, you're in the herd, there's a lot of, lot of eyes looking at you. So, you know, it's, it's just a good way to start, um, kind of break yourself in if you're going to follow in on hunting dangerous game. So the first stock on buffalo, um, we were checking some uh, leopard and lion baits. We pulled up here to check a bait this morning. Uh, they spotted some buffalo. Uh, we're going to get out and see if we can put a stock in on them. We're looking for a, a cow buffalo without a calf for Addison. And we came across a, a herd that was again in the riverbed. And so we had a really good vantage point on them. We got to stock up, spend some time really sizing up the different cows that were available, making sure that none of them had a calf. And that became a little tricky with them in the reeds, trying to make sure that we had the right one. We ended up finding up one that, that would work, but the opportunity just didn't come to take that shot. Southern Ohio Outfitters is your premier 100% fair chase whitetail hunting operation. Southern Ohio Outfitters has been guiding hunters to their trophy of a lifetime since 2005. Call or text Dave Lusk at the number below. 
So one morning with Adrian, uh, it was a quick stock that we did on a, on a herd of buffalo. We had no cameraman, so we moved in really quickly. We pulled off a shot. Um, we thought the shot was good, um, but buffalo are really tough, and so we, we called Leon and Paul in, um, and we decided to have some more people to help on with recovery. So we got a radio call to go over and uh, catch up with Addison and Adrian. Uh, he had shot a cow buffalo. So once we looked at the situation, we decided uh, that we should call in some dogs to help make the recovery um, as safe and as efficient as possible. Uh, we had two dogs help us out there on the trail. The trackers were helped kind of guiding in the right direction and it really saved us a lot of time of continuously bumping that buffalo and continue to move it along. The dogs found the scent after walking around in the brush for some time and took us right there to it, bait up the, the cow and allowed us to move in and make a shot. You excited? Excited, very much. Yes. Good dog. <laughs> As a first time hunter, I wanted to, to get an experience on the dangerous game and being able to do that with a cow buffalo um, and be able to share that moment with Paul and Colton uh, was really special. And I want to thank Paul for allowing me to come to this trip. Words can't really explain some of the experiences you get here, some of the situations you get put into, and it really just provides an amazing perspective on life. To be able to see different cultures, to be able to eat different food, meet new people, it's been a trip of a lifetime. And I'm, I'm very excited to continue to, to grow with this family and continue to share more adventures with them. We decided we'd take a little break and uh, head up to Victoria Falls and just have a couple of days of downtime. So, you know, uh, I'd always wanted to take uh, Colton and Addison up there, you know, when we first started talking about the trip. And uh, Leon was able to organize uh, everything for us. So we were able to make a couple of calls, organize a bush plane to fly us all up to, to Victoria Falls and spend a day up in the falls, which was really great, you know, get the opportunity to take a break and go see the falls, it's always good to be on the river. So we got to Victoria Falls and you know, uh, Leon had booked us some rooms at the Victoria Falls Hotel. Very historic hotel, beautiful. It's a little bit down from the falls, so it's looking over the gorge of the Zambezi River. You know, we fitted in quite a bit that day. We were able to go to the falls and, and check out Victoria Falls. Did a little dinner cruise on the Zambezi, which was, which was really awesome. It gave us a chance to just kick back, relax, visit just amongst us and talk about the fun times we've been making, the memories and everything. And you know, the sunset on the mighty Zambezi is, is very breathtaking. And uh, to be able to share that with friends and family awesome memories. So we ended, you know, with an awesome evening uh, here in Victoria Falls. Spent the night there at the hotel, got up the next morning, had a really nice buffet there. I knew that Paul was looking for a hippo and had always wanted a hippo. So I made a couple of calls to a friend of ours, uh, Chorus, who operates in the Gutcha Gutcha area of Kariba. You know, Leon knew that I wanted to hunt a hippo, just didn't have the opportunity. Set us up a hunt up there on Lake Kariba with a friend of his. Chorus was able to accommodate us and, and had a hippo for us at short notice. And uh, we're headed over to the airport to catch the bush plane and we're headed up to the next camp on Lake Kariba. 
This segment is brought to you by Talent Roofing. Quality roofing since 1987. Kuiu, the most advanced mountain hunting clothing and equipment on earth. Alamo Precision Rifles, the best rifles this side of the Pecos. So we arrive in camp, you know, they, they, you know, we're only there for a short amount of time. So we, you know, we grab a quick lunch, get everybody settled in. And uh, we loaded up in a boat, started looking for hippo. We went straight to an area where we had seen some, you know, a, a large number of hippo. As we, you know, went out in the boat, I didn't imagine hunting hippo in a boat. So we found a lone hippo down here close to a bridge. We're going to go down and check it out. You do need to take the time and, and really look at the hippo and try and assess them. Well, hippo hunting can be challenging sometimes, especially in the situation we had where the weather was, wasn't great. Uh, the hippo was spending the time mostly on the water. On the floodplain area that they normally hunt the hippo was uh, flooded, so we had to pursue the hippo in the water, which presents its own challenges, you know, sexing the hippo for a start, trying to determine where, you know, a big bull from a big cow it's quite difficult. Um, there's a number of things you look for. Obviously, you look for a very big neck. You're looking for a broad head, a nice long head. You're looking for uh, swellings on the side of the nose, which would indicate, you know, uh, bigger teeth. So you actually spend a lot of time looking at hippo, looking at different hippo, and 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 comparing them to the other hippo, looking at how the hippo is behaving. You know, what what he's doing in the in the pod. Listening to Leon educate us on them and how everything's working out and how you judge the hippo was very interesting. There's a couple of them over here to the left. The hippo's gone under and walked right by the boat. You can watch the bubbles. So we got a pot up front of us, but one decided it wanted to get out of here, so just walked right up underneath the boat. You know, we get out, we're riding around, and we, we see lots of hippo. I mean, I, I'm gonna guess maybe 100, 150 hippo that first day. Hey. There's one out here by itself. Still haven't found a big bull. You see the one that's the key at the second from the right. That's the only one I want to share about. Lots of bombs with cows. Uh, there's another one behind it's a cop. You yeah, sort of like looking at us now. Uh, Lots of females with calves. A cow and a cough, yeah. We'd looked at a lot of hippo that day. There's a lot of hippo on the lake. Uh, they've got a really good population. We just didn't get the right hippo. That's a big one over there, man. Huh? Over there. Huh? There's a big one right there. Just came out of the water. And that one's small. That was small. <laughs> So we've been out pretty much all afternoon, we've seen a lot of hippo, just looking for the right one. So it's getting late, so I'm probably gonna head into camp, and give it another shot in the morning. You know, we had seen a couple of bulls that day, 
but uh, you know they just kept saying you know this is we can do much better that's not what we're here for we want you to have a magnificent bull you know the day was long for us because you know we're sitting here anticipating you know getting to shoot a big bull and we think they're big but they're not to them so you know they get us to hold off and we head into camp for that night for a nice dinner and get to bed and get rested up for the next morning this segment is brought to you by Elite Archery, makers of the world's most shootable bows. Vortex Optics, the force of optics. Slick Trick, the deadliest broadhead, period. Scott Archery, the number one name in the release game. This segment is brought to you by Dillon Manufacturing, fiberglass deer blinds. Eberly Stock, our favorite hunting pack. True Glow, when brightness counts. Fox Pro, high performance game calls. So next morning we're up, we're headed out in the boat. Uh, the reason we're, we're having to hunt out of the boat is, you know, Lake Kariba is real high. I mean, it's, it's just fixing to breach the dam. And it's, um, you know, it's flooded out a lot of hunting lands, a lot of the areas where the hippo come up on, on land where you can move in and do, do a safe shot and, you know, have a safe hunt. Uh, just wasn't available to us, so so we had to do it from a boat. So, you know, we get back in the boat the next morning. We head out to an island area that is really usually not an island. It's part of his hunting land where we had seen a bull the day before. And so we eased up there bright and early in the morning. And as we pull up, there's about 20 hippo out in the water. We weren't there long, and they had already picked out the one. And, uh, you know, it kind of separated itself from the herd. If you look, he's looking, facing slightly away from us. Just try and hit him wherever you feel comfortable about, and when you're ready, take the shot. Okay. Lights out. Lights out. With a hippo, you only have a very small area to place the bullet when they're in the water. Um, so, you know, you take your time, you, you make sure you have a perfect shot, or you just don't pull the trigger. Paul made a fantastic shot, and then it was just a waiting game, waiting for him to float, you know. So we found us a big bull. Uh, we put one in him, just at the base of the ear. Uh, now it's just a waiting game, hoping he floats up here pretty quick. Usually maybe a couple of hours, so we're just gonna sit here and wait. All right, so we put the shot in the hippo. The hippo's down, it's sunk in the water. You know, it's going to take a few hours for it to float. You know, the gas is in their stomach from the grass they ate before, has to ferment a little bit, and it, they swell up and they'll float to the top. So we sat there about an hour and a half and decided we'd just mark the spots. So we put a brick in, in, a, in a water bottle and sunk it in the water, marked it with a GPS, and we went over to the island, got out of the boat, kind of relaxed a little while. And so after you shoot a hippo, um, it takes a while for them to float. So we've came over here to land and we're just hanging out, waiting. It's been about two and a half hours at this point. And about three hours total had gone by and we decided we would go back over to the marker and see what's going on. We, we eased back around there and uh, you know, it still hasn't floated completely, but the sun was coming through the clouds and the tracker standing up on the front of the boat. And we got right, right at the marker where we had marked it on the GPS and the tracker spotted it below the water about three or four feet down with the sunlight shining on it. <laughs> there he is, man. <laughs> That'd be doggone. Thank you. No, a proper thank you. Thank you. Well, well done. <laughs> ah, thank you. That was a good yeah, shot. It was shoot. a good shot. Obviously, there was a 10 sun, but well yeah. done. Where's your knife, yeah. Craig? Yeah, it is it. So it's been uh, almost uh, almost three hours, and we came back where we marked him and uh, spotted it somewhat under the water, but you could see it under there and floated up some. We've got it tied up to the boat. We're going to take it into the land, towed it into the shore, and uh, they had a tractor there. We've got it pulled up on the on the beach there and. Uh, Man, what a magnificent sight. Those things are huge. 
So we came over hunting with Leon with Save Safaris uh, on this trip and we didn't really have a hippo on the list, but uh, we decided to take a, a break from hunting. We came up to Victoria Falls for a day and uh, Leon organized us a hunt to come over here on Lake Kariba. Yesterday we seen a lot of hippo. We passed on a couple and got up early this morning and went out and was able to harvest this awesome hippo here, hippo bull. We thank everybody involved for helping us get this done and uh, it's been an awesome adventure. Thanks, Leon. Pleasure, brother. Good luck for the next one. Yes. <laughs>